Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Bronx Reefer Brock. Finally back with an update on the tank. I haven't done a video in quite a while. I just thought I'd give you a brief uh, flow through to see everything that's still working on my tank. I haven't done too many upgrades. The tank is kind of on autopilot. It's doing its thing. And so when the tank is doing its thing and everyone's happy, uh, I tend not to change anything. So, this is a 90 gallon mixed reef tank, as you can see. Uh, the pumps are J Bow, actually. I have them on intermittent. Um, they've been working great for me. So, uh, obviously, you have to stay on top of the J Bows. You have to replace them, I would say, at least once every three or four years, depending on how long they last, of course. Uh, but yeah, swapped them out. Mine are covered in car line right now. So it's getting to that point where we're going to have to start replacing or upgrading those pumps. Okay, so first things first, let's go up to the canopy. Let me show you the lighting real quick. Not much has changed. If people know my older videos, I have three Gen 5 Radions, uh, two blue, one white here in the middle. And at the end, I have a fourth light, which is like a Amazon night crew light, just for some supplemental lighting on this end of the tank. Okay. So we go down, some of the livestock. So this is a torch coral that was fragged off of my main colony. Uh, that colony had about 10 heads on it. And I sold a few, uh, a couple of them died. I didn't frag it properly. Um, this one's hanging on. I got him down here low in the tank. He kind of likes it in his corner. Uh, next we have like a, what is this, Alveopora. We have uh, plenty of Kenya, Kenya tree <laughs> corals. You know, once they start uh, breaking off, or uh, they feel stressed or threatened, they will break off pieces of themselves and let them fly around the tank and regrow somewhere else. Um, it becomes a nuisance after a while, so you have to stay on top of the, the Kenya tree corals. So we go up. This is part of a huge area I had of green slimers, uh, acros. This was fragged as well. This piece here in the back, this was a part of that colony. As you can see, it's all new white tips, all new growth from where I had fragged uh, dozens and dozens of pieces off of this entire area here. So I also have plenty of Montipora Capricornus, as you can see, greens, blues. Um, that's also crazy growing. Uh, be careful with it. You just have to kind of trim it and it's gonna chip here and there anyway, while you're maintaining and cleaning the tank and things like that. But um, they're very nice, I love them. Middle here we have the Alveopora. No, no, sorry, Hydnophora. This is, is either Hydnophoria or Hydnophoria. Um, this has like been one of my strongest growing corals. Uh, started with one stalk and um, it stings everything. So it, it, it maintains itself. I don't have to do anything with it at all. Um, this is more of that green slimer colony. I have it in a different lighting area. So I'm getting a little uh, difference in color from the other one over here. So slightly different. It's hard to tell with the camera. As we scroll down, this I believe is an octospawn. Uh, has hints of blue on the tip and brown stalks. It's a nice color. Uh, hammer corals. This one is being hosted by this clownfish. Uh, it's not very happy. Clownfish kind of roughs it up a bit. Uh, another hammer. This is a frog spawn. This is like my biggest coral here now. Um, actually, he's kind of closed up too because of the clownfish. So, as we go up, this is a part of that colony, that torch colony that I have. Uh, it had the nine heads on it. 
This one's not happy in this position because it's getting too much flow. So it's gonna be moved shortly as well. And again, more Kenya tree coral here sprouting. And more and more Matipora Capricornis. So down here, I believe this is like a little Micromusa. And I originally uh, removed my Zoa garden um, because it was growing everywhere. It was growing up the rock. It was, it was going everywhere. So I kind of took it out. So I put it back in for a little splash of color in this corner. Um, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to keep it going. And right in the middle, this guy has to come out if I'm going to continue with this garden. So this hammer coral has to come out. And again, invasive Kenya tree sprouting in the middle of my zoa. So that's going to be fragged soon, hopefully. All right. Um, everything else down below is pretty much the same from my original tank. Got my sump, got my Curve 5 skimmer, which is off at the moment. Refugium. I'm still rocking the Chato with a bit of Miracle Mud. There's also a chocolate chip starfish in this tank somewhere, in the sump somewhere, Refugium. Um, because I have a Harlequin shrimp in here somewhere. Usually sleeps in this cave over here. I don't know where he is at the moment. Uh, yeah, he's been doing well. I had a slight outbreak of the Asterina starfish. So the Harlequin shrimp made quick work of them. Um, and so now I bought the chocolate chip starfish to help feed the Harlequin. And I cut one of the legs and I was appalled. So I know it's recommended uh, to feed these animals. I am not one for cutting up the chocolate chip starfish. Uh, I didn't dig it. It was not cool to me. Um, even though I know the, the appendage will grow back, it's not something that I advise. I don't think it's a, a cool thing to do. So uh, the Harlequin shrimp most likely will be going back to the store to help someone else out with their Asterina starfish problems. So that's the quick update on this tank. I have another update coming shortly on my Innovative Marine 15 gallon clownfish tank. So there it is y'all. The boy Bronx Reefer Brock is still in the game. We're still reefing out here. If you have any questions, like, comment, subscribe. Hit me up. Have a good one.